This is Economy Watch. What you need to know about New Zealand's economic life today. Brought to you by interest.co.nz. Kia ora. Welcome to Wednesday's Economy Watch, where we follow the economic events and trends that affect Aotearoa. I'm David Chaston, and this is the international edition from interest.co.nz. And today we leave with news the IMF now expects a global soft landing in 2024 and 2025 after authorities seem to have successfully quelled inflation. But first, an update on dairy prices. We mistakenly signalled a full GDT dairy auction overnight in our report yesterday, but we got that wrong. It is next Wednesday, February the 6th. But there was a GDP Pulse event overnight instead, and that delivered higher prices. Whole milk powder prices were 1.1% higher than the last event a week ago. Skim milk powder prices were 0.3% higher. These gains were less than anticipated in the dairy futures markets, but both continue the recent trend of rising prices. Meanwhile, the US Red Book retail index of bricks and mortar stores came in 5% higher than last week a year ago, maintaining the recent gains. And don't forget these are off heady rises a year ago, so there isn't any indication yet American consumers are flagging under household budget pressures in these results. And the widely watched Conference Board survey of Consumer Conference rose in its January edition largely as expected. Consumers are feeling the most upbeat in two years. And there's been a trifecta of good American data out overnight with the US JOLTS report surprising with a rise in job openings in December. They surged by more than $100,000 from the previous month to over $9 million, the highest in three months and above the market consensus was expected to hear of a retreat. The only American data out overnight that was negative was the Dallas Fed's survey of their service sector in the oil patch. Like the factory survey, it retreated. In China, market optimism for an economic rescue package is fading. China's stock and bond markets are giving a clear signal to policymakers that they need to take more steps to revive investor confidence. Stocks fell for a third day yesterday, pulling back from last week's rebound. Their benchmark 10-year bond yield dropped to its lowest level in more than 20 years, as traders now expect the central bank will release additional monetary stimulus to boost growth. But direct solutions for the troubled sectors still seem unaddressed. The IMF may agree with Beijing that current approaches will be enough, but financial markets remain sceptical. In Europe, sentiment was broadly stable in December, and the EU released its fourth quarter 2023 GDP result overnight, and it looks like they have avoided a recession, even if the result was weak. They stalled in the last three months of 2023, following a 0.1% contraction in the previous quarter. Analysts had expected the fourth quarter to decline too. But these are preliminary estimates. They avoided a recession because of better-than-expected growth in Spain and Italy, while the French economy stalled and Germany, which is the largest one, contracted. They will be relieved at the overall result, but in fact it doesn't really paint an encouraging picture. Australia said that December retail sales were weaker than expected, falling 2.7% from November to be just 0.8% higher than a year ago. That was their steepest drop since August 2020. This follows a revised rise of 1.6% in November and a fall of 0.2% in October 2023. Meanwhile, inflation ran at about 4.3% over the same time, so retail volumes in 2023 shrank by about 3.5%. Overnight, the IMF chimed in with an updated 2024 growth forecast, one they raised, which was a bit of a surprise. They now expect 2024 global economic activity to expand by 3.1%, an improvement from 2.9% seen in October and keeping the forecast for 2025 unchanged at 3.2%. The key improver came from a greater than expected resilience in the US and several large emerging markets and developing countries, as well as anticipated fiscal support in China. 2024 growth prospects were revised higher in the US, China and India, but the institution expects lower growth for the euro area and Japan. They foresaw small improvements in Australia over the next two years, but at modest levels, but forecasts for New Zealand were not included. The US Treasury 10-year yield starts today at 4.08% and down two basis points from this time yesterday. And the price of gold will start today up another $8 from yesterday at just on $2,035 an ounce. 
and oil prices are up a dollar at just over $78 a barrel in the US, while the international Brent price is just over $82.50 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar starts today at just on 61.2 US cents and marginally firmer than yesterday. Against the Aussie, we're up 20 basis points at 92.9 Australian cents. Against the euro, we're unchanged at 56.5 euro cents. That all means our trade weight hit index starts today at 70.2 and up 10 basis points from yesterday. And the Bitcoin price starts today firmer yet again. It is now at $43,177, which is up 2.1% from this time yesterday. Volatility over the past 24 hours has been moderate, at just on plus or minus 2%. You can find links to the articles mentioned today in our show notes. Get more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston, and we'll do this again tomorrow. Tomorrow.